At this point in time, I'd like to yield to my good friend, Mr. Holzkamp. Thank you, uh, Congressman Reed. I appreciate the opportunity to visit uh, here, and uh, it's uh, a very timely topic. And I come from western Kansas, and uh, big skies and big dreams and big visions. And, uh, and I tell you, we can see an approaching storm brewing miles away, sometimes 100 miles away. You can see it. You see the dark clouds. You can, see the, you can feel the gusting winds. Though the skies are wide open, sometimes it's hard to predict, predict which path the storm will take. And I tell you, we've heard tonight, and I'll say it again, there's a storm brewing here in Washington that may seem like it's miles, perhaps hundreds of miles away, but it's not. And unlike our Kansas storms, it's pretty evident the storm, this storm is going to hit America. Unless this Congress and this president acts, every American will pay higher taxes next year. Let me rephrase that, every tax-paying American, because you know half of Americans pay no federal income taxes. So I'm talking about the half that actually pay, pay. Income and capital, gain rate, capital gains rates will go up. The death tax will go up as well. Child tax credit and standard deductions will de decrease. All of this is certain to happen unless we act. And I, I, I really believe it's been mentioned that this would be the biggest tax increase in American history. I think it actually will, might be the biggest tax increase in human history. It could be. We'll, we'll look forward to those figures. Our economy is just starting to show signs of life again, however weak. Can you imagine what it will mean for the economy if taxes go up at the end of the year? Can you imagine where the stock market is going to go in the final quarter if Congress goes home before the election without acting to extend the lower capital gains rate? I know my colleague Colonel West noted that uh, the president uh, might not be a great student of history. Actually, all he has to do is study his own comments. Go back less than two years ago, the president said, you don't raise taxes in a recession. That's President Obama, the president of our country. If he could study his own history, I agree with him. I don't agree with him on a lot of things, but he said, you don't raise taxes in a recession. And sure, we might have emerged from a formal definition of a recession, but I don't think there's anyone out there who believes the economy is growing by leaps or bounds, and, and I don't think you can shoehorn a massive tax increase onto an already overburdened American economy. You just can't. America needs and deserves a tax code that's not premised on pitting American versus American in a class warfare struggle. Unfortunately, that seems to be the only real solution this president has. The so-called Buffett rule is, is only a gimmick. It's just a gimmick, trying to distract the American people from the re reality that he wants the biggest tax increase in American history, and he's going to get it unless we can change this before the end of the year. I proposed uh, a bill to, uh, called the American Opportunity and Freedom Act that would make permit, permanent the Bush-Obama tax cuts. Yes, the Bush-Obama tax cuts. Look back at history. This president extended the tax cuts. He signed them. They are the Bush-Obama tax cuts. Remember, he called those tax cuts a substan I want to be right here on the quote, a substantial victory for middle class families. This was the President Obama out on the campaign trail today, I believe, saying, we have to extend these tax cuts. I agree. I also support comprehensive reform, including uh, the fair tax. I think my colleague from Georgia is going to visit about that, I hope. I've co-sponsored the Jobs Through Growth Act and numerous other proposals to make our tax code fairer, flatter, and more simple. The bottom line is we need to do something now. Our tax code should not outpace the Bible in number of words. It certainly doesn't outpace the Bible in wisdom. And families shouldn't have to read 100-page booklets to fill out their tax returns. And if I told, I'm told if you call the IRS, you call it one hour, you call the next hour, you call another hour later, you will get a different answer every time you call in. Because even the folks that are implementing the tax code, they don't know what the answer is. And Americans out there just tuning, trying to do the right thing, trying to do their fair share, Mr. President. Your IRS agents can't even tell them the right answer or the same answer. The most fundamental purpose of the tax code is to raise enough revenue in order to fund essential functions that fall within the purview of government. I just got off a, a, a Skype phone call with fourth and fifth graders in Emporia, Kansas. They had a lot of great questions. Uh, I thought the best question was a kid that asked, I think a young man says, why are taxes so high? Of course, he probably doesn't pay much taxes. He probably heard that at home. But the qu answer I gave him was this, because we spend too much money. And on top of that, we borrow another $1.1 trillion 
under the, the, under the Obama budget. And so not only taxes high, they're still borrowing money so they can spend it. It comes down to how much we spend. I think we can agree that Washington problem is not, not enough revenue, it's too much spending. Washington has created this storm. Washington has created the storm, but unlike the tornadoes that sweep across the plains, we have an opportunity to avoid the devastating consequences of the approaching storm that's coming at the end of this year. And I'm excited to be here to talk about that because I must tell you, I am optimistic. We can solve this problem. We can take advantage of the approaching storm and actually do comprehensive tax reform that can change the future for all Americans. We can pull this economy out of the doldrums. Go back to the days when the economy actually grew, when jobs were being created. But in today's environment, the uncertainty created by this administration and by tax law that's not permanent, that is dragging down our economy. We can't avoid that. We can do much better. And I'm happy to be here tonight to talk about that. And I yield back my time.